audio settings? I may have. Can you hear me? Is everything super good or not? Also, I didn't realize that, like, you can probably hear me, like, eating cough drops, huh? Yeah, you can probably hear, like, hear it, like, swirling around in my mouth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just, yeah. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> um, if you're wondering, um, what's with my camera? I got a new camera. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. I'm not actually sick. I just really love eating cough drops. Because they're like candy. But, like, they also make your throat feel better just in case. Um, yeah. Okay, for, for, <laughs> for any of you new people who are like, what the fuck is this? Um, hi, I'm Ryako. And, um... Usually, like, when I stream, I do, like, I share scores and stuff and, and, uh, just basically projects that I do because I'm a, I'm a musician like so many other folks. Head first only, hello, array of emotions, hello, um, and to the rest of you who are watching, hope you guys are doing okay. Head first only says, have you tried fisherman's friends yes i have i've tried all of them and they are strong they are stronger than like they're like the kind that makes your eyes water hello oh i'm saying hello oh, i'm sorry you can't i can't i keep forgetting this isn't like a i'm not like waving to you and you're waving back i'm so sorry hey andrew right how's it going thanks for Saying hi. Thank you for showing up. Um, yeah. Um, I know I know him from um Facebook, from uh, especially like Nordcore core hip hop. That group. That super exclusive group. <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a nerd, Jesus. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> I I'm um Fisherman's Friends. Okay, alright, so I have this thing. I have this thing. Where I eat like a lot of like throat drops, cough drops. Basically, I'm on my desk. I like I don't eat at my desk. I just don't. I don't like the idea of eating at my desk unless it's like I'm eating something very fast and not messy at all, something that won't leave crumbs. But most of the time I don't eat at my desk. Except for gum. And I don't think you can really say it's you're eating it. It's more like you're chewing it gum because um if i i don't want to drink too much water so i you know then i then i'll have to run to the toilet and then it's like ah i don't always want to keep pausing for that um also these okay i eat a lot of these things and i know i know it's not candy but it's um hold on can you see that it's um I'm, you know, if I'm, I'm holding this up, I'm also testing the autofocus on this fucking camera. <laughs> okay, so this has zinc, vitamin C, and menthol. And basically, it's supposed to, like, be really, it's sugar-free. It's supposed to be, like, super good. I, I'll take anything that claims to even slightly boost my immune system so that I don't get sick. Because I see, like, so many people, hey, it's Jules! Hey! How are you doing, Jules? She says, hi. Guppy Wigber. That's Jules. She says, hi, love the dress and cat ears. Thank you. Speaking of the dress, hold the phone. Hold up. I got to show this to you. This is like, there's this like weird sort of like bow thing. And it's like, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's like a weird dress that I found on, um, I got it on Amazon. Okay, I'll be free. It was super cheap, and it was a pink dress, and I thought, hey, why not, huh? Hey! Dying of exposure says, ooh, fancy, and I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of girl I am. I'm fancy. Look, I actually did my hair. It's it, it's actually done, because it doesn't really, like, yeah, because I'm trying. I'm, I'm attempting to not be a slob. 
So, um, hey, Steven. How are you doing? How are you guys doing, by the way? God, I hope you guys are doing better than I'm doing. Right now, I'm just sort of like scatterbrained. And, um, yeah. I'm, I'm scatterbrained and like, I'm glamorously scatterbrained. <laughs> yeah, I like to bring the glamour. Because it's not like I can, like, rock up to the grocery store and be like, Hey, I need to go, you know, hi, person in Carrefour who is working there. I would like to buy some avocados and do you enjoy my gown? That's not a sentence that I would pull out. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like tomorrow I actually am getting a, a new, possibly, I can keep this pink dress. Because, um... Uh, yeah, but it's like the fanciest one I'll ever own. Amen. And, um, that'll be interesting. Um, uh, and I'll wear it if it looks amazing. And if it doesn't fit right or anything, send it back. And that's how you should, I think that's how you should treat clothing in general. If it doesn't, like, if you don't, if it doesn't look good, if it doesn't look amazing, check it to see if you can alter it yourself or get it altered to fit a little better or some, you know, you can take a dress that is like 13 euros and make it look like it's not 13 euros. Case in point, this dress. <laughs> no, I didn't alter it. It just fits like that. Ooh, dying of exposure says making bacon and Brussels sprouts. That's one of my favorite things. I love bacon and Brussels sprouts. That sounds so good. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I hope you guys are doing okay. I'm kind of like all over the place and, you know, kind of crazy. Oh, Gummy Wigber says, are you saying that just because you're Belgian? Oh, it's like, basically, um, he said it was a reply to the bacon and Brussels sprouts, like, you know, saying, oh, it's even making bacon and Brussels sprouts. A ray of emotion says, sounds good. No, it's not just because he's Belgian, Jules. It's not just because he's Belgian. I think he actually likes it. Yeah. I Yeah, when they're done right. He says, nah, sprouts are pretty good when done right. What he means to say is, sprouts are great when they're not boiled to, like, farty death. All right? When they're not limp and have turned to the, co the color of, like, I don't know, sludge. Like, green sludge. I have had people give me Brussels sprouts that are, like, boiled to death. You know, when they're, like, yeah. When they, when it's, like, guaranteed to, like, cause the gigantic mega fart. Or a mega fart plus, like, many aftershock farts. That's what. That, and, and, and it's not like it's a maybe. It's, it's a yes. It's a guarantee. Like, I guarantee you're gonna, you're gonna fart your way to sleep or not sleep because you'll be in so much pain because of trapped gas. Okay, yeah, and that's enough about farting <laughs> because it's glamour time. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Everybody's talking about sprouts and you know what? They're all right. Steven says, yep, got to hit him with high heat fry pan bacon grease. Yes, that is true. High heat fry pan bacon grease. I do mine in a wok because that's the only one that I can like where I can safely move them around because I usually like to eat a lot of of uh, a lot of vegetables. If I eat vegetables, I like a ton. Head first only says roast them and add horseradish sauce. Oh, I'm going to have to try this next time. Okay. All right. Horseradish sausage. I'm going to give it a go. If I don't like it, Chris, I'm just going to be like, Chris, why did you recommend that? But no, no. Chris's food advice is sound. He introduced me to, um, to Bakewell tarts and, um, and hot cross buns. And I am grateful for that. I am also grateful for many of the British foods that I hit the, the best fish and chips I've had to date. Battenberg cake. I did not get to eat Battenberg cake. I, I saw what it looked like, but I did not get to eat this cake. And 
And I think that maybe when I can visit, when, when quarantine is like over, when the lockdown is like a little less severe, maybe I can cross country lines, country borders, and you can like, you know, like give me some Battenberg cake. And then we can just basically, I'll bring all my fat eating dresses so we can eat. And I will have everything I, I, I bring will either be very loose fitting or have elasticated waists. And we will just binge on junk food. Yeah, we'll, he says we'll we will binge on junk food again. Yes, because we did that last time. That's what we did in February. Isn't that sad? Like, oh, that's my, you know what? Like my idea of a great vacation is going somewhere, hanging out with a friend and just eating, just eating. It's like, I never, I, I, I never forget to bring like leggings or sweatpants <laughs> or some kind of thing where it's like, you know, something <laughs> that gives me some room. Um, Gubby Wigber says, I hear Unicola has a sale on maternity clothes. Yeah, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> but I mean, let's be real. Who, who of us hasn't had like a, a nine month food baby? And when I say food baby, I mean like, you know when you eat so much that your stomach expands and you look kind of like you're pregnant even though you have testicles? Like, or whatever. Um, yeah, like when you eat and you're just like, holy shit, what did I do? I just ate all this food, but it was so good. And then you pat your stomach and you're like, wow, look how much you've grown. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. I like visiting people and just sort of eating a bunch. Oh, Headfirst only says, yeah, been there, lost 35 pounds since then. Well done. So it's now 35 pounds. Good job. Well done. Um, yeah, it's because I haven't been there visiting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think you would gain those 35 pounds back if I, if I, you know, if I, if I hung out with you and be like, let's eat, man. I want that beef chow mein. Let's eat everything. Uh. <laughs> hey, Sean Solo Beats is in the house. Hello. How's it going? This lady, he says to me. I don't know what he means by this lady. Like, this lady is really into food, and I am. Oh, God. This is why I have to do low-carb diet crap. It's because, um... It's because I really, really, really love junk food. It's usually like, it's like, I don't know, just carbs, carbs, all the carbs, all the carbs, because they're so delicious and addictive. And you're just like, oh, wow, how did I end up eating an, an entire box of cereal? And I can do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> love you, Ryako. That's what Sean Solovit says. Love you, Ryako. And I'm like, love you back, motherfucker. <laughs> I can't do that right. Oh, is that how I, oh, I'm terrible at this? I can kind of do like shadow puppets. There's a, this one's supposed to be dog. There's like a rabbit somewhere. And I don't know. Bird. Yeah. Terrible. I'm terrible. Ugh. Anyway. I hope, yeah. Oh, junk food. Okay. I want to see, can, can you guys tell me what is your top, like just the top best, you know, first place junk food item first place like this is it will it will like if you can only have one more junk food item what is the junk food item and don't tell me that you're just not into junk food like there's always one there's always one little like you know one oh oh her head first only says singapore fried rice no contest yeah Sean Solo Beat says, ice cream reigns supreme. <laughs> yes, I love ice cream. I used to list that as my favorite food, but now it's not my favorite food. Um, because pizza, which is Array of Emotions' favorite junk food, pizza is now my favorite food. Because you can have so many toppings. So many toppings. Dying of Exposure says, homemade nachos. Oh. That sounds good. This is terrible. I just it had like fucking chicken nuggets. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, homemade nachos sounds so good. 
Oh my gosh. We can't even get fresh jalapenos here. I would love some with fresh jalapenos. Mm. Okay. Guppy Wigber says, Vietnamese lumpias. And I say, that sounds great. Is that junk food? It's deep. It's, it's, could, yeah. No. Deep fried. Maybe. I can make those. I can make you lumpia. I know like two different ways how to, you know, two different styles of lumpia. If you ever want me to make you some lumpia. I can do that because, uh, yeah, Filipino, right? Sean Solo says, pizza's not junk food, it's life. <laughs> it's a philosophy. <laughs> it's a way of life. <laughs> Hells yeah. Shit. It, and there are so many types as well. Ugh, love. Oh, God. Oh, no, Head First Only says, I don't know what they are. You don't know what... Lumpia, it's like, it's like egg rolls, you know? Like spring rolls, yeah. But there are different, there, uh, there are different kinds. And um, there are different kinds of uh, pastry wrapping as well. So um, it'll affect the flavor and also the chew of, and, and crispiness level of the, you know, of the deep fried thing in question. Yes. So... I, yeah, no worries. I can, uh, yeah, no, actually, lumpia is, is the, you can, that is a, it's, it is a correct word, way to say it. It, it doesn't have to be spring rolls because spring rolls and, and lumpia, they're different kinds. Um, in the UK, spring rolls are like, some of them are like enormous. They're like this big. They're like the size of a, like a phone and they're, they're just packed with like probably mostly bean sprouts. <laughs> And then there's like a good, you know, then there are like ones that I make, which I haven't made in a while and I should probably, but I, yeah, the Asian store was closed and I couldn't get pastry wrapping, but um, they're like thin and they're skinny and they kind of look like the size of, uh, the thickness of, oh, I don't know. Damn it. I don't have anything on my desk. Usually I have like examples of stuff. They're good. Okay. Basically, everything is good. Everything is wonderful. And if you deep fry it, it's like, yeah. Sean Solabit says, oh, you can't get fresh jalapenos. Oh, no, I can't. I can't. No. Tears. I know. In America, you can get so much. I guess that's one of the things I miss about living in America. It's that you can get, like, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You will probably be able to find it. And yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's just like, yeah. Uh, I can't get fresh jalapenos here. Like, I can't get a lot of things. And to be fair, it's probably <laughs> for the best. Because um, um, Megaron posted something about like how Cinnamon Toast Crunch was amazing. And my response was, "It's they don't sell it here. Um, I've had it, obviously, um, but I can't. I, I it's probably best that I I don't get it here because I will eat the shit out of that box. I can finish a box in a day, and I know because like one time when I was feeling bad <laughs> and I was like comfort eating, I ate like an I ate a box. It was bef yeah." Yeah, it was just like, oh my god. Just when the, the cinnamon and that sugar hits your lips and you're like, oh my Jesus, oh god, I love you. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Stop. And I'm rambling. Dying of Exposure says, we can't get healthcare. Yeah. I know. You, can, you don't have natural national healthcare, do you? It's like, god, that's tough. That must be so tough. God, I don't know how people live, man. I mean, it's like you can only, I don't know. It's, it seems really, it's, it just, I don't know. I think that it's, a, it's much nicer when there's like a health system, a healthcare system that's sort of geared towards prevention rather than let's stop the bleeding right now. You know, it's, I don't know. It sucks, man. <laughs> okay. Deep fried Mars bars. Oh my god. That's right. That's a Scottish thing, isn't it? 
That's a Scottish thing. Deep fried Mars bars. Deep fried everything. Are you? I mean, come on. This is a nation that drinks iron brew. Have you ever had iron brew? Has anyone had iron brew? It's so orange, but it it's not. It's not an orange flavored soda. Deep fried haggis. Okay, I will try the deep fried haggis. Actually, I'll just try haggis. I will do. I will try good haggis. I don't like crap haggis. I want the good stuff, like the stuff that Scots would be proud of. They would be like, like. Here's some haggis! And you're like, yes! You know, they'll be proud of it, they'll give it to you. <laughs> oh my god, deep fried Big Mac, deep fried- Jesus! Okay, basically, deep fried Twinkies! Good god! How do you deep fry Twinkie? Do you like, have to dip it in batter? Is everything dipped in batter? And then just like, deep fried? Cause like, I think that it would fall apart and like, disintegrate into like a, a sugary mess or something. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to, like, think about the logistics of this. If you deep fry it, like, yeah. Oh, ask the Texas, Santa Labit says, ask the Texas State Fair. Good God. I, if I, yeah, I can't imagine. The coolest thing I ate during South by Southwest, you know, which was in Austin, Texas, was, uh, oh my God, was it, like, alligator or something i think it was a alligator meat or something oh guppy wigbur is asking what are twinkies do you guys want to like twinkies twinkies technically they are a vanilla sponge cake that's about this big and filled with sort of this super super sweet sticky like vanilla frosting and, um, and I know Array of Emotions is saying, Twinkies are probably the most artificial food on the planet. And I'm like, yeah, but they're good. <laughs> Don't pretend like they're not amazing in their own right. There's a reason why, like, after they took away Twinkies, didn't, I, I feel like there was like a Twinkie, not a Twinkie ban, but like people stopped eating or they stopped selling Twinkies, and then people demanded the Twinkies, and now the Twinkies are back. I love Twinkies. I actually really do. But my favorite w was, um, you know those, like, those, okay, um, was it Hostess? Is this, this is the brand that makes Twinkies. And, um, they also make these chocolate cupcakes, or these chocolate cakes that have this sort of, this sort of, layer of of like a, a a ganache or something on top with like a white swirly thing yeah i like those a lot and basically you know what any kind of cake that's got like a filling it, it sounds good to me damn it damn it i want cake fuck <laughs> oh yeah because i'm doing low carb which is no fun because if you want cake you basically you have to make cake Dying of Exposure says, Hostess went bankrupt there for a bit. Ah, oh, is that what happened? Oh. And then people were like, Twinkies, they are, they are America's, like, they are an American symbol of freedom. Freedom! Yes. You have to have Twinkies, man. I'm sorry. Okay, if I find Twinkies on, on a trip back to, if, if you can find Twinkies, Guppy Wigbur, you gotta try them. I hope you like them. Because, well, I don't know. You're always, I think, I feel like, I, I don't know if this is, this is just me, but like, certain foods, certain very, very like American foods, there's, there's like a, I, have, I feel a kind of pride, like a swelling of national pride. Like, certain Belgian things, it, like, I feel like such a swelling of pride when we talk about like, really well done fries like um and or, or a really good chocolate and it's like i feel like it's it's such a it's a matter of like national pride <laughs> and it's like if you don't like it i'm gonna cry a little like inside but i'll be like it's okay different strokes for different folks right Sean Solovit says, if you don't like Twinkies, I can't trust you. Okay. 
All right. That's where he stands. And that's where he stands. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, well, uh, snowballs. Those are good, too. God. But, like, not because, like, they're the best tasting thing. I think it's just a textural thing that I really like about it. But I haven't had those in ages. And I would much prefer um, those. I would much prefer Twinkies, honestly. Yeah. All those snowballs. They're, like, they're so, how do they get so soft? It's weird. Hey, didn't, what is it? Oh, shit. Okay, do you remember that Nick Cage movie? The Nicolas Cage movie, Con Air? Didn't he like, didn't he like snowballs? Ooh, Head First Only says, but Tunnex Marshmallow ones are best. The Tunnex Marshmallow ones, this is, this is like, is that like a British thing or is that a Scottish thing? Um, Sean Salavit says, Ding Dongs are so good. Yes. Ding dongity dong in my mouth. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god, I haven't had one of those in ages. They look like they're, they, like, out of the box, they're these, like, wrapped, they're wrapped in this aluminum foil, and they look like hockey pucks. But you unwrap them, and they are just, like, it's, it's, like, beautiful. Sean Salavit says, all right, be right back, gotta go do work. Go do work. Go do work. Don't be bankrupt or anything, you know. Just make that money. Make that money so you can eat, buy that pizza and live. Live that life. That pizza life. L-Y-F-E. <laughs> I'll try. Guppy Wigber says, I'll try Twinkies if you try Dutch licorice. I have tried Dutch licorice. And I do like it. It's quite strong. If you're not, it's like, I don't know what to expect. It's like, but it's good. I I I like black any kind of black licorice. I usually like. Um and no, I feel <laughs> Ding Dongs are cake. They're these cakes that are like yeah, they're chocolate sponge cake with a layer of like creamy like of also like frost vanilla frosting inside and then like it's enrobed. That's right. It's enrobed in chocolate in a thin layer of chocolate. So when you bite into it, the thin layer of chocolate just snaps a little, just gives away as your teeth sink in to the chocolate sponge cake and right down to the frosting. And yes, it, I really, okay, this is, this is why, I, <laughs> shit, this is why I have to be fucking low carb. Oh my god. Ooh. Head first only says, are we talking some salmiaki here? The type of licorice that Terry Pratchett got me hooked on. He said it's like sucking a boiled battery, and it is. Yeah, I think so. Is it the coins? Guppy Wigbur, are you talking about the, the licorice coins? Or are you talking about um which which ones are you talking about? Salmiaki is also good, but it's not the same. Also, head first only, I'd like to point out that you're just like I love that you just dropped Terry Pratchett in there just like oh yeah because you know me and Terry Pratchett we were like this <laughs> that's awesome oh that's right in the, in the UK by the way those licorice coins are called Pontefract cakes and yes I do like them yes as I do love um Bassett's um licorice all sorts as well <laughs> rave emotions is asking is there like some kind of rivalry between the dutch and the scandinavians over licorice at guppy Waper? hmm is there <gasps> please inform us on your international like rivalries head first only says well some of us did spend an afternoon in the pub with him oh god oh god Okay, okay, Terry's old friend. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Like, every time you mention Terry Pratchett, I'll just be like, yeah, and Bill did my music video, and it was great. <laughs> I'll just do that. Like, William Gibson's in my music video. Yeah. I wonder if I could, yeah, like, yeah. But only because, like, I twisted his arm or something. Or I'm a really good salesman. Like, really good at pitching that shit. And, um, yeah. It's like... 
terrible. I, I don't know. It's because I got the devil in me. You know why? Because the women are the devil. We are the devil. But it like in a great way. In a fun way. We are born with the ability to like shoot lasers out of our eyes. And it's amazing. <laughs> and it's like, I'm here for it. All right? Okay. So, um, yeah, Guppy Wigbur says, no, it's no competition because obviously we were first. We already won. This is, um, this is in reference to the licorice thing. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I'm here for it. And I probably, like, when, when I'm allowing myself to eat more, some sugar, I'll have some, I'll have some lovely Dutch black licorice. You know, and I'll I'll just take a photo for you, Jules, and I'll be like, "Hey, girl, it's like I'm partaking in your national in, in in a national food, a point of pride." Yes, Head First only says, "And thank you for getting him to sign that copy of Fourteen Times when you did that video." Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, all right, so. My music video for Monster of the Week, um, it's basically the song is based on a, it's it's because I'm like, I, I love the X-Files and I grew up with the X-Files. And so um, I made a song that's sort of like, not quite like a tribute, but more like, you know, in in the spirit and essence and uh, of uh, the X-Files. Because let's face it, you know, they that was an amazing show. And it was for that time, certainly they just, wow. They really, they did so much. It was groundbreaking to me. It was really great. So um, I'm part of a group of people who are, um, who are the WGB. And the WGB, it stands for William Gibson Board. Because we're all part of a message board. And basically we're all like these fan girls and fan boys and fan people who love William Gibson. And um, we call ourselves Wigbers because um, it's just easier. Instead of saying WGBers, Wigbers is easily is easier, right? So we do this and um, we get together sometimes. We get together like when there's a book release or an event or something, we'll fly around or we'll, you know, we'll see each other. I visit people, hells yeah, we're good friends. And William Gibson is the, he's like the cyberpunk daddy. He's like the daddy. And we love him because he's, his stuff, I'm sure, like, his books, like, blew our minds. And, oh, Headfirst only says, he's a sweetie too. Yes, he is. He's sweet and he's kind of quiet. And when he talks, you kind of, like, you do this. He's talking, you kind of do this. Lean in. You know why? Because he speaks softly. He speaks softly and he's nice and he speaks slowly as well. And I really like that about him. He's like the, the nice, sweet uncle that, you know, the, the nice one, you know, the one who who's not going to make fun of you for changing your hair color or something. You know, he's like the nice uncle, but who writes amazing books and is brilliant. And so, um, so I was in Vancouver visiting another Wigber and, um, and I was going to, and I was filming, filming parts of my Monster of the Week music video. And because William Gibson and um, Richard Maddox had collaborated on two screenplays for the epi for episodes for um for uh the x-files i thought hey hey you know i i gotta talk bill i gotta talk bill into doing a cameo and like i i made this entire plan like i gotta convince him to do this music video to be in my music video even just for like a second because why because he's like he's our cyberpunk daddy and and we love him and he's just great and we've had we you know like wigbers we've all had dinner with him several times you know because that's how we roll in wagamamas <laughs> at a big table 
<laughs> okay. And um, yeah. And so at first he said no. And then, and I think he kind of said the next time he said he didn't, he wasn't really sure about the time. But then I figured out a way. He said he could have coffee with us. And then I figured out, like, all right, let me try to figure out what's, what does he feel uncomfortable with? He's, like, uncomfortable with, with speaking. He doesn't like his voice. Hey, Wizard Supreme, who used, who was toxic before, by the way. He, like, toxic. Yeah. But now Wizard Supreme. Wizard Supreme, it sounds like a really great, like a Wizard Supreme. Like a, a really delicious kind of, like, cheeseburger. Like, order the Wizard Supreme. And it's like extra bacon and cheese. And I'd be like, thank you, please. Yeah, or prog rock band. Wizard Supreme! Prog rock band! Well done, Guppy Wigber. Also, um, yeah. And Bill, Bill did the music video, by the way. And so, and I made him sign this copy of 14 times um, that my friend had first only sent me because I needed that as a prop to use on the beach in Hawaii. And I did. And then I, I asked Bill to sign it. And I'm like, Bill, can you sign this? Because this is for my friend Chris. And he brought he sent this to me because I couldn't get it in Belgium. And now I want to give it back to him. But I'd like to give it back to him with your signature. And he totally signed it. And it was really great. And I was like, oh boy, I hope, I hope Chris likes this. And I didn't, I, don't, I didn't say anything. I just wanted to surprise the shit out of him. Chris... Were you surprised? Also, um, yeah. Hey, Wizard Supreme, I am doing okay. I am, I am wearing a cool dress and I'm have, I have all the, all the, the hair thing going on, which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, I don't normally do my hair. Um, but I feel like I ought to, because I need the practice. Thank you! Wizard Supreme says it looks nice, to be honest. Yeah! Thank you! Alright! So I'll do my hair more. Alright. Gonna try. Dying of Exposure says, Wizard Supreme is too close to Grand Wizard for me! <laughs> American KKK problems. But it could be assigned to Vermin Supreme, which is a thousand percent better. Yeah! Uh, yeah. Wizard... Yeah... The clan, the KKK, geez, wow, that's a, yeah, American problems. Um, I used to live in Oregon, and um, the small town that I used to live in, which I will not name right now, um, was a, <clears throat> a place that had um, a courthouse, an old-fashioned courthouse, and a tree that I think used to be a hanging tree, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Guppy Wickber says, way to kill the mood. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Steven. Let's all give Steven a big hand. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> shit. Um... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, that go and Rave Emotion says, well, that dog got dark quick. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Dying of Exposure says, no, don't reveal the secret deep racism of the Northwest of the United States. <laughs> Is it a secret? Is it a se Really? I highly doubt it's a se If it's not a secret, oh my, I, it shouldn't be a secret. Y'all should know. You should know before you move. Be like, hmm, you know what? I might not want to live here. There might be a hanging tree next to the courthouse. <sighs> Array of Emotion says, remember when we were talking about Twinkies? Good times. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, Diane of Exposure says, it is. Portland was founded as a white sanctuary city. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> he says, sorry, sorry. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, 
as long as like as long as like twitch doesn't get mad that we're having actual an actual discussion like because i know that they're a bit like strict on the rules about streaming um any kind of hateful speech certainly any nudity um or some kind of yeah just inappropriate stuff and like terrible hateful language yeah they they're quite careful like i have i have to be a bit careful about that i once wrote a comment in in my friend's oops in my friend's uh stream chat in the chat and i was like i was like yeah something about like jesus like this fucking kills my cpu and the mod had to like had to like kind of check my comment first because it had the word jesus and kill and hate i think in it but it was only talking about like programs i was only talking about programs but with strong language and um yeah <laughs> wizard supreme says i hope twitch don't get me banned yeah i hope i don't get banned i don't think i will though i'm sure there are some people who are much worse than i am and yeah they're much worse than I am. Anyway, um, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna try to, like, crawl out of that dark, scary place right now. Um, and, uh, and, <clears throat> um, so this is, this, this will be, by the way, this will be the last stream for a while, for Metropolis, my last Metropolis, um, stream for a while, because, um, honestly, <laughs> Metropolis takes me a long time to score. Like it's taking me a long time, and it's a lot of work. And I love doing it. I love it. I love, I love scoring. But it takes me a bit of time. And um, what I've shown you, I've shown you so far. I've I've almost shown you like almost like half the film. Okay, but and it, and it seems like, oh yeah, you know, it's just like, it just keeps going. It's like no, I actually, it actually takes me time to make. I have to, like, do stuff. Oh, Wizard Supreme says, you'll be right back. I'm going to go to training. I'm coming back maybe in an hour. Yeah. See you later. Thanks for stopping. Bye. Yay. Um, Head First Only says, no. No, as in, like, no. I'm, like, yeah, I'm sorry. I can only score so quickly. And it's not like I don't have other projects I'm working on. I am working on other things. And, um, um, and sorry that it's that I, I'm not faster a faster scorer but I just want to make sure that when I share something with you um, when I share part of a score with you that it's actually decent and that I that it's good I don't want to share stuff with you that's not finished sounding or that doesn't sound really really good to me because I don't I don't want to do the film a disservice and I think it's, I think that I have, I have so much respect for, for that film, for the people, you know, for, for the efforts that went into that, that I can't possibly share something with you that doesn't feel finished enough. And, um, and I, I am still, um, scoring obviously, but I just, I'm not there yet with those sections and, I will share them when I'm there, when I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, this is good. I can deal with this. Like I can, I can play this for somebody and not feel like, like it sucks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I will make, I will, I will stream other things though, other projects. Cause I've got more. I always have projects, always have projects. And, um, yeah. And I'm sorry, I, I'm not faster with Metropolis, but it actually does uh, take a bit of of planning um, because you have to think about how the how the film moves and um, the pacing. You have to think about what leads into the next thing and what leads into that, and how do I connect these things and bring these themes back together? So it's like it, it is a it's an awful lot of work, but I love it. Head first only says, I totally get that. Do your thing. It will be awesome. Thank you. So I will. I will do my thing. I will try my best to um to get to that point where I'm like, all right, I can share this. And I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like this sucks ass. Um, 
And uh, but in the meantime, I will share other projects with you um, that I'm working on. And I'm thinking actually of of getting some um, of doing like a like a separate stream, maybe like for a uh, one one night a week or something. Another night, not Wednesday, maybe like Tuesday then or something. Um, of game, like a game, like doing a couple hours of of a game. Not like a not video game, like a game that you guys can all participate in. Because I was um I was um following um Songko Jam's uh stream this morning and I was playing a game with him and there are these there are these games um that you can buy that you can play with other people. I'd like so you guys who are in my chat right now who are watching, we could all end up we could play games games together. And all you need is like, you know, you can do it through your browser and it's that easy. And I would love to do that with you guys because you know what? It's because you guys are smart and playing these kinds of games, like trivial pursuit kinds of games or like, you know, clever write things that you write games. I love playing that with really smart, smart people. Like, really smart people. Hey, Chantal Beats, you're back! Ooh, Guppy Wigber says, Could be cool to do a WGB stream, maybe. Yeah, I'll do that. Sure. I'll, you know what, I'm gonna do, I was thinking of doing a game, a game stream, so, where we can all play games together! Yay! That way I can, that way I can hear how brilliant you guys are. Because you, you guys are brilliant. And it's like, I, I want to hear that. I want to hear. I want to see your brilliance, because you're interesting. Smart people are interesting, and I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sean Solovit says I'm dumb as a sack of rocks. I think you're giving rocks a bad name. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was an that was a low blow, low hanging fruit. I am very sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you're not dumb. <laughs> Look, I don't think you're dumb. I mean, usually you have to like I've I've met dumb people. You don't come across as a dumb guy to me. I think yeah, I've met I've met, I've met dumb people. Don't worry. Never apologize for the truth. I <laughs> it's terrible god, the self-deprecating humor. Jesus! <laughs> oh my god! It's everywhere! Okay. Things are getting kind of rough here. Okay. So. So tonight's stream, um, more Metropolis. You'll get to see the last part of this, this bit. Um, Head First Only says, smart, question mark. I couldn't figure out on Sunday's stream that the reason you couldn't hear my Ableton feed was that the feed wasn't switched on? Sigh. Ah, is that it? That's why we couldn't. I was like, turn it up, turn it up. I can't hear anything. Yeah. Oh, you start. You're, you know what? Look, mistakes. You make mistakes. That doesn't mean you're stupid. But if you make the same the same mistake like twenty times, okay, you might be a little slow. All right, but that doesn't mean you're. You know. If you make a mistake, doesn't mean you're stupid. Most likely, smart people, you won't make that mistake again. Not on, you know, you'll you'll figure it out. You'll work on it. You'll do whatever it takes. You know why? Because you don't want to feel like an arse. No one wants to feel like an arse. You just want to feel like we're smart people who are, who have brains and, I don't know, who are valued for, for our intelligence. Blah. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to um to Ableton Live and if I freeze please please tell me okay Doot. Did I freeze? Am I still here? No. All good. Oh, thank God. Fuck. I thought you meant no, I can't hear you. <laughs> Guppy Wigber says, to be honest, I just spent 10 minutes with no sound from Ryako because I accidentally switched off the sound button when dropping my bottle on my laptop and didn't realize it. <laughs> oh my god. It's okay. We can all have a slow 
day to day. It's okay. We can all be slow. Fine. All righty. Let's see. Okay, so last time, um, we, yeah, Sean Solo Beat says, we're a smart group of folks. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I believe in you guys. You guys, man. You're smart. And if anyone tells you you're not smart, well, it's okay. Because, yeah. Because uh, Guppy Wigber says intelligence is relative, right? Yeah, I guess so. And also, it depends on what kind of intelligence you need. What kind of knowledge is valuable in the society you live in. So, yeah. It's okay. I just assume all of you are smart because you're showing up here. And you want to, if you want to, look. Okay, if we're, if we're going to be, let's be real. What kind of people, like, what kind of people are going to enjoy watching, like, a bit of a score made by some rando <laughs> chick in her, like, you know, in her little, like, attic studio? Um, for, like, Metropolis, for a silent film from 1927. Who's going to watch? Who, who wants to watch that? It's going to be smart people. Smart people are going to watch that. You know why? Because you value. You value things. You know, you understand what, what old films are worth. And also, usually people who love science fiction, they're usually smart. You know, there's a reason why, like, the, you know, the Trekkies... We had to, like, you know, hide when we were in high school. Like, didn't want anybody to know how nerdy I was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Head for Solney says, um, Remember George Carlin's line, You know how stupid the average person is? Just remember that half the people in the world are dumber than that. Oh. Head for Solney says, Smart people are who are movie nerds and are science fiction nuts. Exactly. Smart people. That's you guys. And I appreciate you. Anyway, uh, where were we? Um, okay, so last time in the film, I think it was, we were, um, I, I showed you guys the Tower of Babylon thing, right? It was, they were building a tower. So, so far, here's how, you know, here's a very brief synopsis. Yeah, Sean Solis Beat says, I'll allow the compliment this once. Okay, just the once. All right, let's not get too big headed here. All right, let's not. You know, let's we're not gonna make this an everyday thing. But you can take the compliment just once. <laughs> so, Metropolis, if you don't, you know, um so far in this film, it's a science it's a science fiction film from nineteen twenty seven. Yes, it's a silent film. And it's in black and white. So for those of you who just refuse to watch black and white movies, this one's not for you. All right. Um and it's basically you've got You've got a um, a city that has the people in charge. You've got the people who labor. And you've got this need for a mediator. And this is the kind of system it is. It's basically laborers and people in charge. Okay. Head First Only says, That shot looks like a photo from a Gene Wilder lookalike convention. <laughs> a lookalike convention. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's very, like, kind of like Dr. Strangelove. You know, they're all, like, sitting around going, like, Yes! How I learned to love thee. Atomic bomb or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it, or something. Yeah, it does, huh? They've got all... They've got... They've got... You know what? That's... That's the fashionable wavy hair. See that? It's fashionable. That's what that is. They're like, you know what? You know what's really fashionable in the 19... 20s wavy hair you know they got better hair than i do damn it <laughs> okay so so far in, in the film we've got the main character frieder and um he's oh what's this the theme of mediator was thea von harbu's big thing she was mrs fritz lang and wrote the screenplay yes yes thank you that's brilliant head first only has the facts yes and, um, don't know why I'm telling you guys this. You already know it. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But I knew that it was, like, I didn't know that. So thank you. Because you're smart! Okay. 
Let's bring it back around. Um, let's see. So far, uh, he sees Maria again. I guess the, the character Frieder is, like, basically the main character. And he thinks he's, like, there's... He thinks he's, like, the mediator that <clears throat> that the people need to, you know, to basically... Like, they're the heads who are the thinkers, like, these like these arses sitting around right here these i guess they're the they're like heads um they are the planners and then there are the people who have to work underground who run the machinery who keep everything going and they're they're the the hands and in the middle there needs to be a kind of heart which serves as a mediator between the head and the hands so in the story there's kind of this like search for a mediator and for somebody who's willing to take up that role as a mediator and understands the importance of of getting people to speak the same language. This is why they do the whole Tower of Babel thing. Because if, if you don't know what the Tower of Babel story is, it's basically like they built a tower so high and nobody's, and everyone spoke a different language. And basically it was like no one could communicate with each other and yeah, and now in order to make a happy society, I guess, you have to be able to communicate, right? It can't just be like a, a group of like dudes with curly hair or whatever sitting around making all the decisions and then they're the working people and that's it. Because at some point we won't understand each other. All right. <clears throat> She's head first only says, see also the whole of... Side A of Rush's album Hemispheres. Okay. They're, yeah, you know what? This movie, this film, has also, like, served... It's It serves as imp inspiration for so many other works of art. It's a lot of music, videos, everything. So, this is a big... This is a big one. It's a big one. And if... And... If, I don't know. I hope you guys appreciate it. I think you do, because you're here. Okay, so let's see. I'm looking for the part where... Alright, it was the Tower of Babel. Hold on. Okay, alright, so I'm gonna... Um, ah, a ray of motion says we do. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna start playing, and um, and I'll just let it go through. And um, I'll just let it finish until a certain area, okay? And then I'll talk about it. Cool?
Okay. <clears throat> so that's that's uh the scene. Ah. Okay, let me check catch up on this chat. <laughs> okay, you guys like the drums. Thank you. And the crowd chants, yes it does. And um and good, I'm glad that head first only you recognize the the oh we oh oh because I always like I always like sort of I always think of slavery <laughs> when I hear that. You know, like there's a Ben Hur like guy like playing drums and like slaves got a row, you know? <laughs> it's just like shit. Um yeah. It's um I it's like I really wanted um a seat like when it shows that scene it's like it should feel like anytime i see a scene where you've got like uh, the idea of progress or like any kind of technological progress or something um i try to include synthetic stu sounding stuff in that because synthetic stuff is like it's kind of like the sound of, of um it's a sound that we've made rather than just instruments you know it's it's like Every time there is a character that embraces technology, um, I want to make sure that there are like some non-organic sounding things in there. Just little bits, little, you know. And um, yeah, and so that's that's why I do, and I do that through the whole film. It's just, it's like you get to see it more when there are, again, like more more things involving technology or progress or anything like that. You'll you'll hear if you listen closely obviously mixed with like organic sounds you'll hear ones that are you know like computer generated sounds okay so let's see uh metallica used it on the song on justice yeah and head first only says it's way way older than that yes it is and Guppy Wigber says, I just realized that scene where they all run up the stairs is nearly an exact copy of Battleship Potemkin. Yeah, is it? Or rather, Battleship Potemkin, is that the exact copy? How? When was Battleship Potemkin? God, I haven't seen that. Or maybe I did. Maybe I saw it once, but I need to watch it then. Um, Let's see. Sean Solo Beat says, back on the subject of smarts, I just tried to move the window showing the movie. <laughs> Oh god. Okay. Um yeah, you can't you can't move it. Only I can move it. <laughs> um yeah, but yeah. This is incredible, Ryako. Thank you. Thank you, Sean Solo Beats. I'm trying to to do this. Um to do this film justice. So I'm trying to make this this score multi genre and with lots of unexpected things, like thing, you know, a mix of things, so that it's it feels like you know, like even so, it doesn't feel as dated, rather, you know, because like sometimes you'll hear scores and and they'll feel really dated, like really dated, like you couldn't, I don't know. I just feel like if I made something that sounded kind of closer to now, that people would. Be more likely to stay engaged with the film and watch it and and understand how cool it is for everybody you know for for at least for everybody who loves it you know like so i can share that with you cool oh um <laughs> it first only says i've confused mel's cursor with the one on my system at least once during every stream so far <laughs> oh it's okay oh by the way that baseline making that baseline that is actually um, that's an Ableton Live sound. That's actually from the DAW, dude. For reals. Hold up. Let me look. Yeah. I messed around with it. So, um, but where are you? Son of a brick. Oh, yeah. There you are. It's Kick Production, Kick Prod ARP Split. And I don't, it's, um, it's, it's in the DAW. It's in the, it's in, it should be. Yeah, you, you already have it. Um, and the thing that, one the thing that I, I mess with that I automated in there was the saw percussion too. So if you look at like, sorry, it's frozen right now, but 
Um, if you, it's like I'll send um, I'll send more specifics to you, but um, you should be able to find it. It says Kick Prod Arp, and I think it's one of the um, it might be one of those like weird like rhythmic things, rhythmic sounds or something. Hold on, let me go find that. I'll find it for you. Where are you? Come on. So, um, yeah, it's that it's that sound that you like the that um hold on. I'm looking for it. Yeah, you can find it from that. Yeah, you can yeah, duh, you can find it. You can type. Ah sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's talk about smarts. <laughs> um, Sean Silabit says, I am so far beyond excited for the finished product. Uh I am excited to be able to possibly finish that for yeah. You know, for if I can finish this by the end of the year, that's gonna be a good that's gonna be a good year. I mean, this has been a rubbish year so far. Let's be real. Twenty twenty has been really sucky. <laughs> and and we've become mole people who live in our homes <laughs> and hide from the sun. And um yeah. Uh but if I can finish this by the end of this year in a way where it's like I'm proud of it and it's like really polished and super perfect, then yeah, I will I will be really happy with that. Um, so the scene that we the scenes that we went through, I I showed the the um the kind of the building of the tower of Babel. Excuse me, I'm, I think I like I need a burp so badly. Okay, <laughs> Sean Solovitz says I sit at home all day watching my friends on Twitch. <laughs> it's okay, and your friends on Twitch, thank you for watching. And we're I'm you know, I'm just glad like. We get to hang out. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, I should have been in the U.S. at this time. I would have been in the U.S., but <sighs> can't. Yeah. Oh, let's head first. Only says let's not mention the Saper Wharf hypothesis. Oh, although Arrival made a pretty good movie out of it. I don't. Oh, it's. I, you're gonna have to. You, you're gonna have to explain that, Chris. Please explain that. What is this hypothesis? Because I'm clearly not smart enough to know. Chancellor Beat says, I should be doing shots with you. Yeah. We should have been like getting blasted, you know. I would be like, oh, July. That's the that's you know, time to go get crazy and you know, dance around and make music and crap and, and yeah, and get crazy with my nerds. But unfortunately, uh, we got Ronad. <sighs> so, all right. Cuppy Wigber says, when I was even smaller, I always mixed up Schrodinger's cat with Schindler's List <laughs> and called it Schindler's cat. <laughs> oh, my God. If you don't know what Schrodinger's cat is, it's like the, you know, it's simul a cat that is in a box is simultan simultaneously dead or and alive it can be dead and alive and then schindler's list obviously if you don't know what schindler's list is <laughs> i suggest you either watch the movie or read wikipedia or something to find out what that is schrodinger's kids would be a way darker theory oh my god nice these are wow we're getting dark tonight oh my god stop it Okay, it is a now debunked theory that the words you use shape cognition. Hmm. At first only says that's what the hypothesis is. That's what the hypothesis is. Basically, that the words that we use shape our cognition. I, they're, I don't, I, yeah. I can see why that was debunked. I can understand that. Schrodinger's list. <laughs> At first only says... You are simultaneously on it and not on it. You may or may not be saved. That's terrible. They, dude. Oh my god, are we making, dude? Don't make Holocaust jokes, man. <laughs> Jesus. It's, yeah. Hey, Wizard Supreme. He says, yo, what up? I'm back. Yeah. You missed the whole thing about everybody thinking they weren't smart 
Um, and you missed the whole like I I was playing some of the score. Okay, so what happened in the, <laughs> the score? I let it keep playing, and basically you get to see, um, you get to see. Hold on, let me go back. Right. Okay. So basically, they're like, hey, let's... But the minds that had conceived the Tower of Babel could not build it. The task was too great, so they hired hands for wages. Yeah. They hired slaves, basically. They're like, we're gonna slaves. We're gonna hire slaves. Yeah. <laughs> Wizard Supreme says, yeah, I'm not smart either. Why, is there, why does everyone think they're stupid? I think you guys are smart. I've met stupid people. A lot of stupid people. I mean, stupid people are the... They're like the people who, who thought, like, Corona beer would give you coronavirus. It's obviously not true. Come on. I mean, if something's gonna... It's like the beer is, le is less likely to pass on a virus. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. And, um, Headforce only says, so when Amy Adams learns to speak hexapod, her brain is shaped so that she perceives time differently. Yeah, I liked that. I loved the arrival. Have it, I hope you guys have seen the arrival. If you haven't, I really recommend it. If you, if you enjoy, um, yeah, if you enjoy science fiction and if you also enjoy language, because it's, it's a, it's a really interesting idea of how, yeah, of how language changes your kind of your ability to understand things and time and everything like that. Lovely. <laughs> Wizard Supreme says, did you know if you drink Corona, you can cure it with Modelo beer? Yeah. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that gets spread around on Facebook and then people do stupid, they do stupid things and they record it and they're like, look. It can cure me. And then it's like, no, 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 sir. It will not cure you. It will not. Just take that, take those alternative facts somewhere else, please. Guppy Wigber says, yeah, but are you, I can't find the cursor not smart or are you Schindler's cat not smart? <laughs> Schindler's cat. God, that's terrible. Schindler's cat. That's terrible. Okay, yeah, so, um, off topic, blah, 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 blah. um, so basically, they're like, yeah, let's build this huge tower, we'll have this, like, we have this model, we've got this idea, man, it's great, you know, we're gonna make some, we're gonna build a freaking skyscraper, you know, and then they're like, wait, you know, we can't build it by ourselves, we'll just get slaves, and, like, look at all of them. They're, like, shaved heads. But the hands that built the Tower of Babel knew nothing of the dream of the brain that had conceived it. So, herein lies, like, so basically it's, like, saying, like, the hands don't know why they're doing, why they have to do all that labor. And, <laughs> and it's, like, yeah, I know. They don't understand why they're building such a thing. And uh, I'll get to the, I, I will, like, kind of point out something that I didn't like I noticed when I was watching this and rewatching it and rewatching it. Um in this film it's like the whole like hands hands are the labor, heads are the people who conceive of these ideas and and have these grand plans. Oh lunchtime is over. I will be in and out again, lol. Okay. Alright, Sean Solo Beats. I'll see you later. Thanks for hanging out. Um yeah, Wizard Supreme, that's a great name for a prog rock group. Yeah, really good. That's a really... You picked a good one. You picked a good one. Well done, Wizard Supreme. Um, So, I think it's like this film, it sort of like encourages... It's it's not... It's discouraging the people, the, the hands, from like an uprising, all right? Like, don't rebel against the people who are in charge. But at the same time, it's like, it's quite problematic because the people who are laborers are generally born into that kind of, it's like a caste system, you know? 
Like you're the laborers, you're there, and that's it. That's what you get. And it's like I I know that the time period it was different, and I understand that, and I understand that you know people in charge usually want to stay in charge, right? I mean that's how it goes, and laborers. It's like, it's hard to, if, if you're born into that, it's like, I feel that within this kind of metropolis system, it's difficult to, to kind of, to get out of that. So if you wanted to be not a laborer, it, I think it would just, you know, it wouldn't even be an option to you. And so there is something quite somewhat problematic about this story. But, um, but I feel like, um, you kind of have to, I don't know, you have to think about it as like, also, it's a bit of a product of its time, right? So now it's like, we have this, we have, like, we're lucky enough to live in a world where we feel we can we can be born in in a crappy situation and and we can you know we can move like upwards like we can move on from that we can move forward we don't have to stay in a crappy situation you can be born poor and you can like make if you know we all kind of have this sort of this idea that if we work hard enough then we can get out of that like we and and on one hand there is yeah there is that element of like yeah if we work hard yes but at the same time it's like it doesn't you know it's not all just work it's also luck it's also just yeah luck i hate saying that and um and all yeah and sometimes it's natural ability as well like how smart are you? If we're talking about smarts. Wizard Supreme says, but no, for real, I think everyone in chat are smart. Also me. If you can't, for example, you can do math a little. Doesn't mean you're dumb. But if you can't do math, no one is great at math. Math is a number. Hardest thing as you level up to harder and harder. Yeah, it's okay. Look, if you suck at math, it doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you suck at math. And in the same way that some people who are probably brilliant at math they they don't know other things but what if that's all they know that's quite a specialty isn't it it's it's like look i think that if i think that what you do is a reflection of how smart you are so if you if you make really really bad choices <laughs> or if you complain about like bad things happening and then you make more bad choices and then it's like okay then that's a reflection of how smart you probably really are okay i think you know we are what we what we do and you can like someone can say they're you know really really smart but what do their actions tell you so i think it's like you know it's on one hand it's like yeah not everyone can be super smart. It's true. But if somebody makes really good choices, you know, thinks about their choices and, and, and makes good ones, then I will give them that, you know, that sort of the benefit of the doubt. I will, you know, I will give them that. It's like, ah, oh, you are smart, you know. Anyway. Ugh, wow, it's getting like dark. Dark and deep and everything. Yeah. Yeah, Wizard Supreme says, but everyone has a talent. Yeah, to be honest, but some of them don't. And that's okay. That's okay. If you don't have a talent, look, if you don't have a talent or specialty, whatever, that's okay. You don't have to. Not everyone has one. And that's fine. Because you're probably doing things that I can't do. I could never be, like, normal. And sometimes I wish I could, but I'm not a normal person. I've had normal jobs, and I was always miserable. Even though I could do the jobs, I was miserable. So, I don't know. Sometimes it's like having 
a talent, a really good talent, something, you know, it comes with its own like cons as well. Guppy Wigbert says, what do you call it when you're kind of smart, but you're also really stupid? Because that's me. You're not stupid. You got, you got into school. I think you're, I think you're smart. I've talked to you. You're not, you're not an idiot. Oh, I've met idiots. You can actually hold a conversation and you're nice and you get it. That's, you're smart. You're, it's okay. S certain things, you know, we're, you'll learn down the line, but doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you don't know these things yet. That's okay. We all learn at our own pace. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, Metropolis, yeah, slaves, yes, slaves, so they're building, and it's, like, terrible things, and they're just, like, like, look at all these guys, they're, like, shaved, they've got zero, like, no hair, this is, like, wow, they're just, like, these, mm, yeah, wow, and, people spoke the same language, but could not understand each other, yeah, it's, like, they didn't, it was like they couldn't understand each other and they're in such like very different like positions in life. Like look at these these guys are like shaved heads and like they're just like they've got no shirts on. Oh, are you still working on this movie? That's what Wizard Supreme says. Yes, I am because it's a long ass movie to score. It's a long movie to score. And yes, I am still working on it. And I will probably continue working on it until, uh, I would say, what, like, October, at least? October, I'm trying to shoot for, like, a somewhat finished version, a polished version by, by the end of the year, at the very, you know, at the very least, if not earlier. So I'm trying, but I've also got other things to do. So yes, I am still working on this movie. And it's a long movie. And it takes a lot of time to score. It's not just like plonking down like notes and that's it. It's a lot of it is just having to match the emotions within a scene and being able to to transition into other scenes um with the correct emotion. And this is like a this film it gives you a lot of information a lot so you get you get kind of bombarded with lots and lots of information so the emotional tone can change really quickly which means that it's that much more difficult to it's that much more difficult to um to score because you don't get those easy pauses in modern films like you know that modern films have in in this you have to just keep going keep that train going and that's why everything has to lead into the next because you can't have any gaps you can't have any silence it has to just keep going and speaking of keeping going all right so so here you see um she you finally get to see this is like maria goes the mediator between head and hands must be the heart and that's like the big thing that's that's the big takeaway from that everybody says, you know, from this film. They're like, the mediator between... Yeah. So... So they're... Okay, I, I'd like to point out that some of these people look kind of amazing. Like, their faces are fascinating. Like, look at this man. Some of these guys, I was like, dude, it's like Willem Dafoe, you know? Like, look at these guys' face. He's got... This guy, he's got, like, massive eyeliner on. And I'm like, dearie... Wow, like look at some of these these faces, their hair, it's amazing. They look amazing to me. Germans, yeah, Array of Emotion says they do look great. I'm like, yes, they've got interesting faces. Okay, hold on, this one, this guy reminds me of Crispin Glover. Anybody? Anybody? I don't know. Kind of like Crispin Glover, but like with a, you know, I think Crispin Glover's a little cuter looking. Oh, William Defoe. <laughs> At first only since I was literally typing, he looks like Willem Dafoe. Exactly. Yeah. We get some interesting looking characters here. And I really love it because it's, if you notice, it's like, it's one of the, one of the few times where you actually get to see the workers' faces. Because most of the time when they're, when they're filming, it's like they're 
cogs in the machine, right? So you get to actually see, yeah, you get to actually see their faces. So it's one, of, it's one of those things that it's like, it's really nice because when you see their faces, it's like, yes, they are human beings. And yes, they are, they are people who are, you know, who need something, who need to not be forced to work so hard under strenuous conditions with zero regard. Um, yeah. Or, okay, I'm reading the chat. Or green gart side from Scritty Politty. I don't even know who that looks like. Oh, he... Well, Willem Dafoe's granddad. That'd be Wigger says. <laughs> yeah, I love these faces. These people look amazing. And, okay, I have this thing, okay, with Frieder, who is this character. Sometimes I think he looks, like, really, really handsome. And sometimes I think he just looks really strange. And I think it's something to do with, like, the combination of hair and cheekbones. Am I the only one here? It's like, I feel like, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the way I feel about myself. Like sometimes I, I think of myself as like ugly, pretty, like, like sometimes like I look really hate, like ugly. And then, and then sometimes I look really, really pretty, but it's, it's like, it just, it's, it's like just the depends on your, on, on the angle or something. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like ugly pretty. It's like, sometimes it's like, oh, Lord, don't take a picture of me. Ah. Oh, a ray of emotion says hair, cheekbones, and lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> Guppy McVer says, don't forget eyeliner. And Sean Solo Beat says, you hush your mouth, you're gorgeous. That's sweet. Thank you. Um, I grew up, I don't know about any of you, but I was, I was always the ugly one in my family. And then suddenly after... Uh, at, when I, after, I don't know, I grew up, I got older, and then suddenly it's like, oh, good, I look nice now. But, man. Man, I was always the ugly, ugly, fat daughter. <laughs> the one, the smart one. Like, maybe she'll, she won't, she'll be single for a million years, but it's okay, because she'll be smart. And that's what we want. Okay. <laughs> Shred first only says, watch Eddie Izzard in Shadow of the Vampire playing against Defoe's Mech Sh Shrek. Very similar, like, cool. I would love I, I would love to see that. Guppy Wigber says, okay, try growing up with a model as brother. Oh, your brother's a model? Shit. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Like, I... I, it's all right. We are all we all have our fuck days, okay? <laughs> Let's just be ugly. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, <laughs> Wizard Supreme says, "Yo, I had a big head when I was little." To be honest, <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's all right. I had. It's okay. You had a big head. That's okay. That's okay. It's all right. Gubby Wigber says, and a dad who was called a genius by Gibson. Lol. You come from a really great family, Jules. Let's just be real. You come from a cool family. I wouldn't be sad. It's like, yeah, sure, your dad was called a genius, and yeah, your brother's model, but it's okay. It's all right. You look great. You're still beautiful. You know that, right? I love your hair. Jesus. <laughs> okay, Sean Solovit says, My ugly days have lasted the last 31 years. <laughs> oh, God. That's not true. I've seen uglier. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Wizard Supreme says, But guess what? Big head equals big brain. Yes. There we go. You got more room for that, you know? You gotta expand. Yes. <laughs> Guffy Wigfer says, why is this everyone so self-deprecating? Yeah. M. Knights, hey, I remember you. I remember you, M. Knights. Um, from Song Code Jam's stream. Yes, what type of music do I create? All kinds. Generally, um, like, I've released nerdcore stuff. 
like which is basic you know like rap and everything and um also um but what i'm doing now is i'm actually scoring um the silent film from 1927 called metropolis and um lots of people have scored it it's a really classic movie it's black and white and um one of the things i like about scoring um well i'm teaching myself to score Basically, this whole like thing right now is just to teach myself how to score because I don't know how to score. So I'm like, ah, how do I score? I'll just, I'll just learn. So you know how like when El um when we started lockdown slash quarantine and we are like, what are we gonna do? Like some people are like, I'm gonna clean out my closet. You know, some people are like, I'm gonna repair that fence, and I'm like, I'm gonna learn how to score films in a way that you know, makes me really happy. And so I'm scoring this film right now and it's, um, I'm trying to put a, a bunch of genres in it because I really, I really like orchestral instruments, but I also like, like beats, like, you know, just modern things. So I like to take all the genres and smash them all together and try to make it work so that maybe it'll be an interesting thing to hear. And also, um, just to make it like a nice listening experience, you know, because then you don't quite know what to expect. So when you don't know what to expect, it's even that much sweeter. There. That's what I do. So, um, okay, let's see. So far, now that we've all talked about being stupid and ugly. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, it's like we've got the character of Maria. And she's like, we need a mediator. Where's our, and, and the, the laborer's like, hold on. So like Crispin Glover and Willem Dafoe are like, <laughs> hold up. And he, they're like, hey, we need a mediator. Where's our mediator? God, I love their faces. And of course, like the light shines like a halo against like Frieder. And Frieder is the mediator, obviously. M. Knight says, bingo, it's cool to avoid being influenced by specific genres sometimes. Yes, thank you. I'm trying. Um, it, it's, I don't want to copy. I want to really create. That's it. So it's trying to like do something original. Yeah. Try. Cross fingers. <laughs> um, okay. So you see the light shine on Frieder. It's like, Ah, the clouds open up and the sunlight comes through and Jesus is talking. And I guess, I, I imagine that he's like the mediator. He's, but she's like the angel who sort of is like, she's, she comes across to me as like the angel who's sort of like letting him know like, hey, <laughs> array of emotion says, Wait, aren't they in a crypt? Where does the light come from? Exactly. They are in the catacombs. Oh, Cuffy Wigber says, from God, of course. Ooh, yeah. This is like a rather, bib this is a rather biblical scene, isn't it? M. Knight says, film magic. That too? Film magic is like somebody lit like 20 candles <laughs> in the scene. It's like, wait for him. He will surely come. This is like the Jesus thing. So I imagine Frieda's kind of like Jesus and Maria's like the angel who's like, he's going to come, have faith. And he's like, and look at him. He's, oh, um, M. Knight says, is it directed by Alfred Hitchcock? No, it is direct directed by Fritz Lang or Fritz Lang. Um, and uh, he also directed, um, I think it was M. Is a really cool, creepy movie called M as well. I think one of his first movies but um he was like german and um and uh yeah this was before hitchcock so this was a bit earlier this is 1920s and hitchcock was a tiny bit later like at least the beginning of his stuff and then it you know right into the 60s and i think 70s as well yeah headfirst only says yes peter laurie's finest hour peter laurie in in fritz lang's m was he scared the shit out of me. Um, there, 
Yeah. Yeah, like, serial killer. Scary. Scary, but... I don't know. It's just the way he... He just... Just his face. It's like... Ah! Scary. Okay. So, so far, you know, they're like, we will wait, Maria, but not much longer. So, so you see, like, the workers are riled up. And they're just, like... Right now, they're sort of, like, on the edge of, like, revolting. Um, but the problem is that if the workers revolt in this film, if they revolt, then no one will run the machines. No one can run the machines. And so the machines that power the city, that make the, that make the whole civilization, the whole metropolis possible, um, yeah, it'll just, like, who's going to run that? And um, so basically it's just, like, they're hoping, you know, Maria is, Maria is like preaching to them and it's like, hey, we need a mediator. We need somebody to, to basically speak and act as the bridge between you, the laborers, and the people in charge, the, the heads, the brains. Okay, so if you've, I don't know if you still remember, but um, this whole scene, this whole scene, it's happening in the catacombs, it's underneath. It's in this, it's, you know, it's dark and scary in, in, the, in, the, in the catacombs. And um, Rotfang, the, the main villain, and, um, and Jo Friederson, they're watching. So they're like, they're peepity peeping. And they're like, ooh. And he's like watching his, he's watching Maria and he's watching his son. And that's his son. Frieder is his son. And so he's like, Oh, and look, he's like these, look at these, like these workers. And it's like, oh, and now they're all gathering to leave. And like Rotfang's there. He's like the, he's the main, like sort of villain, you know, he's the mad scientist character. So basically he's the one who ends up building the machine mensch. So, oh, a rave of motion says, do you think he knows his son is down there? Oh, wait, you know, maybe, maybe he doesn't because he is, Frieder is dressed like a laborer. He doesn't know that Frieder is dressed like them and was working. He doesn't know. <gasps> maybe he doesn't know his son's there. I don't think, maybe he doesn't. And he's just like, oh, he's just another working guy, you know? Good point. Okay, so they're watching. They're watching, um, and they're watching this, these group, this group of, um, laborers and maria and basically they're trying to figure out like what's happening and and how to sort of i don't know yo is trying to figure out how to get the upper hand or how to how to handle this so that there aren't any more like you know so they don't sabotage the machines anymore and of course you know there it is and of course like Rutvang is like being all, you know, is, is just watching like a little creeper because <laughs> he's a creeper. Um, yeah. So anyway, so everybody in the, everybody leaves and they're like, yeah, let's just, you know, let's, we got to go back to work and shit. And it's like, yeah, I know. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to play um, the rest of this scene for you. Um, and remember that whole bit I said about, like, um, there was, if you were watching my stream before, um, I mentioned a few times that I think that this sound, this score need, needed human voices. And the reason why I said that is because it's a silent film. So generally when you have a silent film, um, you're kind of, uh, uh, as a modern viewer, as a modern audience, we're sort of expecting, we're expecting to hear like the voices oh guppy wigber says i don't think he does because later in the movie he is surprised to hear that his son was also down there with the workers right yeah i think you're right yeah i don't think he recognizes his son um i think that yeah he probably just thinks he's a another working guy because he's wearing the uniform and generally it's like the workers the, the worker people appear sort of faceless to these to the to the people in charge anyway right so yeah I don't think he does. It's sorry. I think Guppy Wigbur and Array of Emotions are correct. He doesn't know his son's there. 
but yeah. Yeah. So he's like, we don't know. All right. So um, I'm going to play uh, M. Night Says Foley or the Mickey Mouse Technique. Yeah. Okay. So the thing with the dialogue, um, we're all, when we watch movies, when we watch any movie, we're expecting dialogue or at least some back background noise or sound or something. And um, we're... We're used to hearing voices. So when you are watching a film and there are no there's no spoken, you know, no spoken parts, it's it's odd for us. And I think if you want people to engage with your with with your film more, it's like you kind of need that sort of human element. Um otherwise it's just kind of like it's just music. And and it's like, I want it to be a little bit more than that. So I do put bits of choir in there. And I do put bits of my own voice of, of me singing or speaking or something. And I think it's it's like, it adds that extra layer of like, um, it makes it so that we sort of expect it or accept the movie more as a, as a movie and not just this weird old thing from like 1920s, you know? Okay, I'm reading the thing. Uh, Wizard Supreme says, Sorry that I didn't chat so much because my dog chewed my lead cable for my PC. Aww, bad dog. Bad dog. You know, the set of this movie reminds me of Franken Frankenstein dog? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, M. Knight says, Yeah, almost like an unconscious feeling towards the picture. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's, you want to stay engaged, right? And, the human voice, I think, adds that that extra element to to make you stay engaged, and um, in that way, it's sort of even though we have like a handful of title cards in this film, it really like makes us feel better, like as viewers, to hear a human voice, to hear voices, because then these characters are human to us; they're not just these old relics. You know, from like they're black and white, they become real to us, and I think it's important to, as far as like engagement with a viewer. Okay, so wait for me, Shirley. Come, all right. Let me start. I'm gonna play the next scenes for you, um, and um, then you can um see, yeah, you could see what happens, um, and yeah, you'll, uh, I guess you'll hear me, saying through. Cool.
Okay, all right, so <laughs> don't worry, I've got some more for you. I'm gonna finish this whole the whole rest of the this part of the movie for you before I end the stream. Don't worry. um, okay, so um, let me catch up to the stream chat oh, Wizard Supreme says, can I send the pic of the movie yeah if if you want yeah i don't um, I don't know it are pictures allowed in stream chat i don't even know i don't I haven't been twitching that long honestly so just you can also send like send me like a yeah i don't know how that works i don't yeah i probably have to change it around or something like i'll figure it out oh yeah it's not showing on the thing because i think mine says no uh maybe it's a no it's got like a weird sort of like sh check box thingy that says like no so I'm sorry. Eh, I don't know. I don't know how this works. I have no idea. I'm sorry. I wish I knew. I, I just, I haven't twitched long enough. Like, seriously, this is like, what, my fifth twitch day, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, um, just uh i'll give you i'll let you i'll give you my email or like email me riako at riako music.com and then i'll i'll look at it and then i'll like i'll i'll i don't know i'll put it up or something afterwards or something um i don't know just yeah just email me um riako at riako music.com it's e super yeah yeah anyway uh he says um I don't know why, but the song in the movie, how it looked, creeps me the fuck out for some reason. Yeah, it's it, the style, the filming style is different. The makeup is different. The lighting is different. Everything is different, and including the uh, the movements. So uh, the way the the camera like it pan, you know, it tracks, you know, where it like kind of zooms into a character. The way it's move, the movement is different. So of course, it's gonna feel weird. It's gonna feel a little weird. Um, Headfirst only says, so Rotfang knows Frieder's there, but he doesn't tell Yo, who he has blocked from seeing. Yeah, he doesn't tell him shit. Because Rotfang and Yo, they're, they're like, you know, they're not friends. Uh, they still have this animosity between each other. And that's because the girl that Rotfang was in love with before, when they were younger, uh, she, the girl he was with, uh, ended up liking Yo more. And ended up marrying Yo and died giving birth to Yo's son, who is basically the guy, the freed freeder who you see. Um, you know, yeah. Um, let's see. So, um, M. Knight says, What I find interesting is that the film has natural vignetting, so I'm feeling as if it's a dream sequence along with the soundtrack. Um, Hedgehorst only says, A lot of the stuff that Lang does, Lang does here was being done for the first time, pretty much. Yes. And the vin and he says the vignetting was hand animated frame by frame. I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised because a lot of yeah, a lot of this had a lot of firsts, right? So um, he says Eric Gettelhut was the guy responsible for most of the animated effects. Yeah, and there are some animated effects you'll see, and you'll see like 
the the vignetting how it changes as well. Like um during the scene where it's like the slaves are building the Tower of Babel, you see like the Babel stuff is animated as well, the 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 word and it looks like it's dripping blood. Yeah. So you see a lot of really cool cool stuff um that was not done. And it was and this so this movie was just very innovative. Really innovative. Um and so far, let's see what else. So you've seen um they finally see each other and it's like I uh, see uh Frieder and Maria finally see each other. And um hold on. Let me move over. And he's like it's finally like yay. He's like I see you I I you see me now and it's like yeah and of course Rotwang's watching and he's like this is like you know I like ooh shit's going down. Shit's going down. This is not good cuz this is like the boss's son and like and basically the sort of spiritual leader of the rebellion. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so this is what he wants to do. Um, he's like, I shall sow discord between them and her. I shall destroy their belief in this woman. So basically, that's what Yo wants to do. He wants he wants these workers to stop believing in Maria because it's like to if you he crushes their hope and. It's like then maybe there's a chance that they won't, you know, they'll be too uh, uh, crushed to rebel or to riot or to, you know, to go against the current system. So, yeah. And he's like, Maria is like gold standard. All right. She's she's good in like every way. She's beautiful, but also she's like a good human being. And so... Of course they follow her because she is so she's angelic yeah <laughs> um all right so um that's what we have so far and of course of course Rotwang's like hey i'm watching this shit go down did anybody catch the the theme did anybody catch the the theme from before there's a theme i played um because i i told you i i do I I take themes and I use them in different instruments with different instruments. Do I have a Discord? Yes, I do. I yes, I do. I will I kind of I'm on Discord, but I don't I only use it to like say hi to people randomly. <laughs> um yes, I do have a Discord though. Um I don't know what it is, so I'm going to have to I'm going to look for that. Um so here Okay, so it's that. And if you remember from the beginning, it was... Uh, where is it? So yeah, there, it's a repetition of the, of the theme. And it's because I like um, this theme. Uh, it's like, obviously, these two characters, Maria and Frieder, they're like, they found each other again. But it's under the watchful eye of Rotwang. And, and it's like, because Rotwang's like, you know, he's watching. So I wanted to kind of give it that, I wanted to make sure that 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 sound that that sort of theme it was in there because it will draw attention to the fact that Rotwang is still there watching there 
that's expl explanation. Yes, and one had first only says, I love how one of your patches is scary low grown. <laughs> it's because it's it's um it's because I don't um excuse me. I was burping. Um I I don't know what to call it. So I just called it scary low grown, which is a sound I made. Um um it's a sound I made that represents like um a start or ending of a shift like the start of a shift and the begin you know the ending of a shift so it's this that's scary low groan and that's that's me like tube and throat singing and then pitch down so it's like that's why it sounds like that okay Mr. Rosy Cheeks is gonna stir it up. Head first only says, yeah. Wizard Supreme says, ha ha, that's so random. While you open up the curtains, you see this huge head. Yeah, he's like, hey, I'm peeping. All right, so that was, so again, it's like I'm re, I'm including like the themes. So I'm trying to re remember to like replay themes because the themes, even if you're like looking away from the, from the screen, you'll still sort of getting, get an idea of who's in, who's in the scene um because of the musical cue it's it's a it's a way to cue to like cue the the audience or to cue the viewer without you know because these um these people they don't have dialogue so you're normally we're used to listening to voices of like a character so when we're watching a film um, even when we look away or we're looking, we're doing dumb and we're looking at our phones and like shopping on Amazon while watching a movie, uh, as we can, we call it multitasking. Um, we know who's talking. We know what's happening. We know what a character's doing because we can hear them speaking, right? Well, we don't have that luxury in, in a silent movie. In a silent film, you don't have that luxury. So what I did with like the characters, with the main characters, I gave them all sort of, um, their own sort of themes and their own sort of instruments. They're the things that sound like them, I think. And um, that's uh, and that's what I did. And that's why you'll find, that's why this theme is in there, The um, this one. And um, I did that because, um, yeah, again, because uh, Rotfang's, fucking watching man and he's like hey what's up you know um and also it's um i'm using the harp in a way like harps are like they just remind me of like angels and stuff and i feel like she's quite angelic that Marie, the character of marie is quite angelic okay so let's see i'm gonna play this on let's see what time is it Ooh. i'm gonna play this till the end of the scene okay and um and I want you to listen for Maria and and Frieder's theme. They also have their own themes. And I'll I'll play this all the way till the end of this this whole thing. And you can and then I'll stop and I'll, I'll tell you about shit. Okay? Yay. <laughs> I think this movie is two and a half hours long, but I'm only playing till the end of these scenes. So it won't be that long.
Okay, so that was, um, yep, that was that, um, yeah, so, sorry, I, I'm sorry, like, the playback isn't as smooth as I'd like it to be, <laughs> like, uh, cause my, my computer is old, and, um, it's from, like, 2011, and I've got, let's see how many tracks I've got on this, 92, and, there are like there are a lot of them that are like VSTs, and so like Ableton Live is like oh, 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 I'm choking and I'm dying. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna read. Let me catch up on this chat now. Okie dokies. Okay, so basically, um, yeah, this is this is a long this movie. I think this one is like two and a half hours, and there's actually like some more footage that's missing. Headfirst only says long. And it's a long movie, and thereby hangs a tale. When it, oh god, Chris, you're so good with words. When it was released in the U.S., the distributors hacked it to pieces, and the stuff they cut was thought lost. A few years ago, a copy of much of the material is found, and it's integrated into the cut that I'm scoring. Yeah, it's true. So they found a they found a version, an original, like a mother version that was less cut up, and then they integrated it with this stuff. So there are parts in the scenes where it's like grainier than others hold on like this is nice this looks nice but then there are parts where it's like it's all like grainy and weird hold on it's it's usually the scenes like there's some bits in there and the grainy weird stuff it's like oh 
the the grainy weird stuff is like um yeah it's it's there you'll see bits and flashes and bits of it and i'm sure like by some accounts it says ooh by some accounts yeah there there's stuff that's still missing and yeah um Wizard's Brain says, yo, stab the fool, shoot the fool, throw the rock at the fool. Yeah, this is basically the scariest freaking scene. Because it's like, it's the scariest use of a flashlight that I have ever seen in my life. In my life. Like, I have, like, basically, he torments her with a light, a flashlight. It's like, ooh, look at the flashlight. And it's like, oh my god. And And why does no one open the damn door for her? It's because those doors... They're not, they, those, those doors are, they only lead to his, his house. Like, you'll see, like, stuff that's marked with, like, a star, like an upside down star or something. That's his, that's his house. Basically, it's like, that's his shit. So, nobody's opening that door for her. It's not like that. Why is my thing not scrolling down? Okay. Anyway, um, I'm catching up. It's so good. Sean Silabit says, thank you. All right. Uh, at first only says, yeah, Lucas learned to fiddle with his releases from Francis, his mentor, I guess. Yeah, it's just, like, um, uh, so, releases, uh, as far as, like, there's always, you know, sometimes you see, like, director's cuts, lots of cuts and stuff, and it's, like, it's just too, you know, it's, like, there are tons and tons of different cuts, and some of them of this movie are, are good, and, and some of them, you know, but, I think this one's the best one because it has the most the footage really helps you helps the film stay connect connected a lot more than than before and um i felt like they cut too much out and so it was just like you know it was just they cut too much out and and i don't like it when people like re-release and re-release another cut it's like get it right the first time stop giving us 20 fucking cuts of a fucking film all right, give us the film that you want, you know, and then stick, you know, how about stand by it? Unless it's like, you know, unless it's something that you didn't get to choose. It's like, come on. I, I just, I just wish people would just, I don't know, stop thinking that you can make a new cut later and that it's kind of okay. I feel like you're changing like cinematic, like history or something. There's something about it, you know. I'm seeing, yeah, M. Night says, if it's unpreserved, then I'm guessing it's probably destroyed. Some some things, uh, it depends on how it was stored, obviously. So I guess, you know, it just, again, things that are stored in, in like a space that is, you know, that's cool. Anything that's sort of based on like celluloid. Celluloid is fragile and flammable. So it's like, you're lucky if you, um, you're lucky if you find old stuff that that is still okay oh is my cat back there shit oh that's mr pickles cat in the background that that's mr pickles uh yeah and i'm reading all these things closer to the heart heart of darkness oh we're talking about apocalypse now dun, dun, dun. yeah a lot of head first only says a lot of directors had their early work butchered by studios it's true it's true because the studios had final say it was before like I think it was before directors had the power to say no, like, I want this, because I, it's like they didn't have any, like, they didn't have any pull, you know? They they didn't have any clout until later. So basically, when, when later on, like, when they're a bit more powerful, yeah, Ted first only said it, as, as their star rises in Hollywood, they get the power to force the studio to release their version. Exactly. So usually, like, like directors, will they'll have, like, an idea of what they want, case in point like Blade Runner like what they want how they want this thing to end and and um and like the studio will will not always be kind about that they'll not always be uh they'll not always go with it they'll be like no we need it to be 20 minutes shorter so that we can fit this in and it can still be marketed like as a you know as a you know, as a quick thing during the summer or whatever. Uh, and and some people thought, oh, nobody's willing to sit through, like, three hours of, of this film or something. And I feel like if it's, it's a long, it is a long film. And 
sitting through it is, it, I mean, like you have to think about the films they made before, uh, back then. It was just they were shorter films. I mean, this is a pretty long one, um, and and I guess was supposed to be longer, but you know, the studio's like, no, it's too long. No one's gonna sit through that, and it's like, okay. Um, which, yeah, Headfirst Only says, and if you're Ridley Scott, you realize eventually you can use computers to fix things. Yes, you can. You can fix things. So, there's that. I guess, I guess now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the situation for directors is, is better now than back then. Um, I don't know who did, who did Blade Runner? Which which studio is that? I don't even know. Um, Paramount. Headfirst only says it was Paramount and Metro Golden Mayer operating as part of part of Fumet. Wow. Yeah. So we can blame them. Yeah. Damn it. But you know, like a lot of their films, they weren't very long. It was like an hour and a half tops. So having even like a a film putting out a film that was even like two hours long was a mate. It was just like a big deal. So. If you looked at the films that were made, they were re they really weren't very long at all. So, and come on, and this is 1920s, you know? So, yeah. So, Adverse Nuss only says, so we can blame them <laughs> for Metropolis's distribution. Yes, yeah. Wizard Supreme says, I follow you in Insta. Thank you. Thanks for following me in Insta. Um, I will sometimes post photos of cats myself or food or weird things that I see on the street but i haven't seen anything cool lately so but yeah i need to leave that leave the house so i can see things right oh m knight says avatar yeah i wasn't i i don't know it's just lots of unfortunately like i and i really hate seeing that too i really i, I really wish that the directors who you know would would be allowed to have that creative freedom because there's, if it's not, like, there, there are such slight things that, if changed, completely affect the emotion of a scene or the emotional tone. Um, it's just, I don't know. I, I think that we should, you know, at least try to give the directors a bit more, you know, leeway and a bit more creative freedom so that we can see what their vision is cuz if you're doing if you're working on this film you're creating this thing and it's like come on don't you want to see what they like what they intended like i w i wish i could see the original version of this film as as a as fritz lang intended it to be but um yeah <sighs> i don't know i hope they find some magical like thing hiding somewhere like Oh, uh, okay. Headfirst only says, yeah, like not having a scene start with, they don't advertise for killers in the newspaper. It's, oh, Guppy Wigber says, but sometimes directors change and jeopardize their own films. True. It is true. And, and I think that it, it's, it's gotta be, it's, it's probably like a real like tug of war, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, basically. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. So this was the last bit of um, of the second section of uh me the Metropolis score. Um, I've already started on the third project, the same, you know, the continuation, but um, it's not up to snuff, so I can't share it yet. Um, but uh, what else? All right, so. Did anyone catch the uh, Maria's theme at all? So I, I re again. Now I was talking about like putting, putting, you know, themes, their own themes in there, but like with using different instruments to, you know, to change the emotion of the scene. And this one is this scene is really sweet. You know, where they kiss. You know, they kiss, and she says, "See, I'll meet you at the cathedral and stuff." And it's like. It's it's lovely because they're just they're really you know they're they're really sweet and um hold on hold on 
I'm gonna look. Okay. Cuppy Wigber says, yeah. Oh, Head First Only says, Lucas is still dicking about with the films. I just wish that he wouldn't. Can we just stop dicking around with the films? You know? Come on. Stop dicking around. M. Knight says, I do agree, but I guess we have to think about health and safety, even though it might not be obvious. I imagine there's quite a lot of people that can't sit through a long film, which might impact some statistics somewhere. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I can understand that. And in, in Belgium, um, if there's like an especially long movie, like some, um, they actually take a, there's a break that they stop the movie um, and they give you about like a 10 minute break or something, 15 minute break so that you can get up walk around, go to the toilet if you need to, and then come back or buy some extra popcorn or drinks or whatever. And and they give you a break. And that's what they do here in Belgium. But I don't I don't think they do that in um I don't think they do that in America, do they? Where they stop the movie. And yeah, it's a little odd to like suddenly for the move the film to stop, but you are thankful and your bladder is thankful for that too. You're just like, thanks. Um and um let's see. What is it? Oh, yeah. Guppy Wigber says you can't even buy the originals without CGI. Yeah, yeah. I used to get the DVD of the original Star Wars when it came out on DVD. <gasps> Head First only has the original DVD. The original version of Star Wars. So, thank you. Wizard Supreme says look at the DMs. Thank you. I will. I'm, I'm going to look at those DMs. Um, let me see. Come on, come on, come on. What did you do? Follow. I'm following. Where's my DMs? Okay. So anyway, um, there it is. So, uh, let's see what else. And I, yeah, and I um head first only says. When I was a kid, a ninety-minute movie was long. Yeah, and now we're now we got three-hour ma marathons. But in Belgium, there is a break. There is generally a break and it's again for health and safety as well you know because you don't want somebody having like what some kind of weird like pulmonary embolism oh this film so i got a i got a d i got a dm by um by wizard supreme and yeah i i haven't seen this film but it's really adorable it's called frankenweenie that's really cute yeah, it's got that, it's got that, that black and, that, you know, it's black and white. It's got that lighting style, that kind of f film noir sort of like dramatic lighting. I love that lighting. L that lighting was the best. Um, oh, M. Knight says, it's happened here in England before. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, and Sean Solovitz, I used to have those years ago until someone stole them from me. So you, Sean Solovitz, you used to have the DVDs of the originals and then someone stole from you and that's terrible. And yeah, that's terrible and you should go get it back. Just go right up to the person who stole it, punch him in the dick, take it. Be like, that was mine. Okay. 2001 was the first, Head First Only says, when 2001... A space Odyssey was first shown. There was an intermission, and and I understand. And this film actually has a mark for it. It's um, it actually has like an intermission. This film, it's it's actually in the title cards. So um, so this film was clearly meant to have an intermission, and I think it's like part of it. It's because you're some people are treating the film like it's almost like a almost like a play or a musical or something, you know. So it's a piece of theater. So. Maybe it's like that. I know there are, there are films that have, you know, like musicals and things that have um, intermissions, like when you watch them. It's And it's just, yeah, it's a good break because I don't want to sit through that something that long. It's painful and I might get a pulmonary embolism or something. I don't know. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to watch Frank and Weenie. Wizard Supreme is highly recommending Frank and Weenie. Okay, I will watch it because I like uh I like Tim Burton and Nightmare Before Christmas and everything like that. It's lovely. Um and M Knight says, "I'd like to go to a silent movie with a live pit orchestra." Yes, I would too. 
I would love to do that, but I'd also like them, like my dream, my big dream would be if I could get, I could convince someone to play, to actually like, if I could convince a bunch of people to, to do this score while viewing this film, that would be wonderful. And the problem with that is that it's a mix of, because it's a mix of orchestral and a mix of, you know, sort of modern stuff. It's like, it's a little, it's a little difficult. <laughs> I can see that. So it's all right. But a live pit orchestra, there's nothing like it. Um, I love, I love a good, a good, huge orchestra. It's like my body's gonna like reverberate from the timpanis alone. <laughs> So, let's see. Let's see. Okay, okay. There's a whole conversation about, like, Kubrick and uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, which is also one of my favorites. Um, and it's, like, just fantastic. <laughs> M. Knight says, imagine a random person brings a harmonica into the theater. That would be... That would be kind of cool. I bet there would... You know, it would be nice if, like... If there were a set, you know, if there was like a score and somebody managed to work a harmonica really, really well in there. Yes. And um, Guppy Wigber says there's this film museum in Amsterdam where you can see the good, the bad and the ugly with a live orchestra as a tribute to Morricone. Yeah. Holy shit. That would be great. Oh, my God. That would be brilliant. Oh, rest in peace, Morricone. You were the best. Legend. Legend. God. Man. That man was like prolific as fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? What else do I want to mention? Yep. There were the themes. I put in themes again. Um, So it's the... uh, Hold on. Where are you? Sorry. This, I have so many effing layers in this. And it's like... It's, it's just... There are a lot of layers in this thing. And, um, yeah, I'm looking at it. By the way, sorry for my Instagram. Okay. Um, Guppy Wigbert is talking about, um, how it's amazing to see your, the mo movie on the big screen, especially in the original state in 77 millimeter. We saw it in 50 millimeter. Actually, it was playing the, in the cinema, like, a year, a, a couple of years ago in the summer. And it was a re-release. It was like, um, because it would have been like 50 years. And so they played it in the in the small cinema in our, in our city, and uh, I saw it, and it was amazing. And I was like, "I'm here for this." And I, and there was like nobody in the the no one in the theater. There were like four, five people tops, like in the in watching. The rest, I don't know. Nobody really wanted to see it on the big screen, which is strange to me. But whatever. Yeah, it's. It's like when it's on the big screen, it just changes like the scope of it. It's it's huge. Ooh, I, I miss so much shit. Oh my god, I'm missing all this crap. Okay, everybody's what? Yeah, basically everybody, you get to like watch like if you can if you can see, especially something of that scope like a big film. If you can see it in the cinema, do. I mean, obviously it's a weird time right now. You can't probably do a lot. like some theaters might be open some might not so it's a little iffy but you know if you know that something's going to be like you know if you get a chance to see like an old movie on on the big screen you should i saw blade runner and it was amazing like in on the big screen it was so it was just it was beautiful and it's like you kind of understand more about how they wanted to about yeah, how 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 they wanted the the viewer to experience it. Okay. Um tick -tick 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 -tick. Wizard Supreme says, sorry for my insta username post. Um you got it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry about like um <laughs> don't worry about it. It's like every look, we all post red we all post crap. Whatever. You are who you are now. And that's okay, you know. Who we, it's like, we all, we all progress. We all change over time. It's okay. 
Um, uh, M. Knight says, unfortunately, I have never watched a film movie in all its glory. Closest is IMAX. IMAX, sometimes IMAX makes me want to throw up. Like, it's almost like too much. Like, at least, some, and some of the three, okay, all right. I ended up seeing, I was in, this is like a billion years ago. Um, the, um, I, I had the unfortunate, um, the unfortunate experience of, of watching the Charlie, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the, the one with Johnny Depp. I saw that in IMAX and, um, I, I don't know. I'm not, a, I don't get motion sickness or anything, but it's like, it's like almost like somebody is okay. It, it's, it's like, it's assaulting you <laughs> like these three, this three days, like in the IMAX theater is like assaulting you. It's, it's, it's like in the clockwork orange where he's the, it's like, or they've got his eyes open and he's just like, Oh, <laughs> you know, it's just like, fuck, dude, it's too much. It's too much. I can't, I can't, I don't know. Oh God. It's, it's 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 overwhelming and it kind of messes with my my like my senses and I don't know I don't know if I want to like see that and uh, oh M Knight says oh there's a 2D IMAX format yeah there is there is and that's much easier but the th holy crap the 3D one it's like I don't want to feel like I'm gonna get an Oompa Loompa in my right eye <laughs> like I don't really need to feel like that you know Guppy Wigber says you know McDowell almost ruined his eyes in Clockwork Orange yeah yeah they had to keep dripping um eye drops in there so his eyes wouldn't dry out yeah I know about that so basically when they're like kind of brainwashing him and he's got his eyes open like with like fucking metal clamp things to keep his eyes open they're just like dripping dripping like there's an actual doctor dripping like drops in his eyes so he does they don't dry out and so he doesn't go blind or something yeah okay so um all right do you oh did you like this core <laughs> um so uh yeah it was an yeah so that's what i did i did this uh yeah i did the um the repetition of certain themes again it's like um hold on where are you ah, ah, ah. hold on <laughs> That's Maria's theme. So yeah, that's Maria's theme. And you know, because I played in the beginning also, and Maria's theme ends up being here, which is... Hold on. Do -do 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 -do. So... Yeah. Maria's theme. Na, 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 na. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So again, themes that uh that I repeat. It's like, because I want you to understand, like, there's an emotional weight behind each, each scene. And even though it's the same theme, you, you experience it differently, you know, because it's a different, obviously it's a different instrument, but even the, the, the tempo of it is different. So it's like, yeah. Head First Only says, oh, oh, thank you. By the way, M. Knights says, great score. Thank you. Wizard Spree says, indeed, indeed. And, and, uh, Edward Sully says, with an underlying bass line that now sounds very ominous. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm doing. Because I want you to... Hold on. 
also. So this is, it's like there's a bit of sweetness because it's wood, you know, the woodwinds and you've got the high piano. But you know that something bad's happening. Something bad is going to happen. Oh, that's me, by the way. That's me singing. So, for when Maria feels like love, it's always a, it's a, there's a, I always put my voice in there because it's her voice, you know? Okay, so yeah. So you kind of get it. It's like there's it's it's just a little I change the piano line just a little bit because um because when I originally wrote this their themes, the the head the the Marie, Maria theme, the um the Frieder theme and um the um the worker theme because there's like a worker theme. There there's like I originally did it in a way where um, that sounded really like that sounded a little um, a little darker, and then I and I had to change I changed it around, and so I figured that I'll use this, this, the darker version where things are bad things are going to happen, like that bad things are going to happen. So it's like I think it's this is the this is the thing that this is the sound from every. Um, from the, like the workers, so in the be in the first beginning of the film, this is I'm playing this kind of this sound for you, but it's not a piano. It's um a synth. So it's like, oh, <laughs> headfirst only says, uh, what? Where do they get all the candles from? I don't know. Maybe like there's just like a fresh supply of candles. Maybe they just bring the candles with them. They're like, hey, let's hit up the store for candles. I don't know. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know where they get all. Maybe they just like hide the candles. Maybe there's just like candles. Somebody brought some and then it's like, okay, I brought like the lifetime supply of candles. I'm leaving them here in the catacombs. If you need candles, just pick one up. Just get it. Anyway, um... So, this, hold on, hold on. See, so these are, again, it's the, rep it's the same, the same sort of sound, the, the same themes, but it sounds a lot Sad. It sounds a little sad, and it also sounds more fragile, because um, I've taken it like an octave up. So anyway, it's just a way of playing around with themes. So if you, if you ever, I don't know, if you ever, if I ever fucking finish this film, scoring this film, um, then you'll be able to watch it the whole way through, and then you'll be like, ah, there's a theme, there's a theme again, but now it's like, oh, this character is like, it's it's this character again. I know this character's coming up because, or this character's on screen because I hear his theme. Okay, uh, and I'm catching up now on these. Where do they get the candles from? <laughs> All I know is it's painful risk assessment document. I don't know. Um, maybe it's like Fight Club, but they make candles instead of soap. Yeah, they're down there. They're like, his name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> and they've got candles. And they're like, it's time to make candles. Like, you're, you're, what was this? You are, a, you are the tap, was it the tap dancing thingy of the world? Oh, I forgot. 
I can't remember the whole thing. There was a lovely I, in Fight Club. I love that movie. I love Fight Club, by the way. I I love Fight Club. Um, it's kind of nice seeing Jared Leto's face get you know punched in several times. It's like ugh, they just they just turned your face into ground beef, dude. That's awesome. Oh, all singing, all dancing, crap of the universe. Yes, array of emotions. Got it. Nice. <laughs> Okay, you M Knight says YouTube channel. I do have a YouTube channel, um, and I will try to uh, yeah, my YouTube channel. Just search for Ryako Music. That's I'm there, but I don't have like a nice little like, I don't have a cute little username thingy because I don't have a ton of subscribers and I don't know. I just kind of post random things. I'm not really. I'm not. I'm not as good at creating content as some other folks. Okay, to be honest, Wizard Supreme says, to be honest, when I see this movie and your beat, I forget that it was made by you because it's so, so good that I think it was like this originally like this in the film. Yeah, thank you. It was not originally like this. Uh, this is, uh, oh, it doesn't sound like this. Like, there are a lot of different iterations and this is, it's just like, I don't know. I'm just trying my best to learn how to score so this is again this is a learning process for me it takes me a while but i'm glad i get to share it with you guys so thanks for watching um and on that note do you have any questions any comments anything that you like do it do you like it so far <laughs> i hope um i'm trying really hard i'll try to finish um, as much of it as possible and then share it with you guys. But again, I don't like sharing it until I'm sure that it's it's good. It has to sound right to me. And um, and if you're a musician, like you kind of get this like feeling, the spidey senses, you know. You're like, okay, I gotta like it's ready or it's like it's not ready. So I don't I I want to do this film justice. And so that means if that means taking a bit more time with creating a score, then yeah, I will take more time because I don't want to. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin one of my favorite films. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. They're talking about, there's a joke in the chat now about Yankee Candle. You know, I don't, I've never, I, I don't, uh, I've never smelled a Yankee Candle. I don't, I've never had a Yankee Candle. I don't know, um, Yankee Candles. They're like stink, they're smelly candles, right? They're just scented candles. Are they, are, is there something about Yankee Candles? I don't know about, I don't know anything about Yankee Candles other than the candles. Um, and Knight says, sound professional. Thank you. It sounds professional. Thank you. I am not a professional. Not really. That's just, I'm somebody who's just sitting here and doing shit. Trying, I'm pulling stuff out of my ass. Thinking, ah, this might sound good. <laughs> um. Head first only, like, Gubby Wigber says those vis Visco girl, V-S-C-O girls that wear scrunchies. I don't, ew. So there are st stores that are just the Yankee candle stores that really are quite stinky. They're a lot, they're very, they're very strong. Let's just say that. Ooh. I, I'll pass just because I don't want to choke on something that's supposed to smell like a blueberry muffin. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Headverse only says, I love it. I am so glad you're investigating cinematic arrangement because you're natural at it. Thank you. I am glad that I'm not sucking completely. <laughs> have I ever Guppy Wigber says have you ever walked past a, lu past a lush store yeah yeah I have and they they're very again it's like it's very strong smell very strong smells that come out of those stores but I'm sure you know I, I'm sure I've used a couple of lush products like somebody gave me and they were nice I, I don't know I guess if you're like sensitive to smell if you have a very sensitive sense of smell like don't walk past those stores. Clearly, don't go into a Yankee Candle store, is what Guppy Wigbur is also saying. <laughs> okay, well, um, that's that's it then. Um, 
I guess I will, um, I guess that's about it as far as like sharing this stuff with you. I'm glad that you could, that you hey, hung out, you could join, we could talk, you know, talk about crap. And I don't know, it got dark there for a bit, but it's all good now. Uh, M. Knight says, if you were to have a title for your YouTube channel, what would it be? Uh, God, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Just, I don't, I don't know. I'm not like a really, I'm not like a YouTuber. I'm, I'm not really very good at that, probably. I, yeah, I don't know. There are much better people who do this. Like, they do, you like, much better YouTubers who are, they have, like, a whole setup. I don't have a setup. It's just me at my desk. <laughs> Social banner. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that because, I don't know, I just suck. <laughs> I suck. I make, st I make shit and I try not to suck. Yeah. Try not to suck. There. Maybe that. Just try not to suck. Um, oh, Guppy Wigber says, oh, Headfirst only says they declined to produce a hashish scented bath bomb after he asked them to. So Alan Moore asked Lush to make a hashish scented bath bomb and they said no. What? What? Headfirst only says, I believe someone was interviewing him and asked him why he was covered in glitter. I'm like, strippers. That's my first thought strippers yeah right glitter strip no uh, no not much of a strip club guy alan moore we don't know he looks crazy by the way but it, yeah anyway um thank you all of you for tuning in head first and only wizard supreme guppy wickber m knights like and john solo beats when he was out there you know dying of exposure which is steven like basically you know Thanks for hanging out, Array of Emotions, everybody. And, um, yeah, I will be back next week with more music stuff, probably, like, not this, not no more uh, Metropolis for you, but um, other things. And, um, yeah, um, other projects I have. So I'll show you some of my other personal projects that I'm still working on because I'm trying to work on some things so that I can polish them and release them. So yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> Wizard Supreme says, "Trust me, there's no YouTubers that have titles like SpongeBob, Go Go Boga, No Chuck, Jesus." I, uh, yeah, yeah, that's not me. That's not me. <laughs> oh yeah, they get millions of views and subs. Yeah, that's not me either. <laughs> it's okay. I don't have to be Miss Popular. Okay. Um, Headfirst only says, great chatting with everyone. Yes. Thank you for hanging out. Guppy Wigbert, thanks for hanging out. You guys are so chatty. I love it. Looking forward to the next series. I will do my best. And um, I'm actually thinking of doing a, a game a game thing. So I'm going to like, I'll try to get all of that shit sorted so I can do fun stuff with you guys. And um, yeah, and I'll share one of some of my other stuff like... Um, the you know musicals that i've written because yeah of course i would make something like a musical <laughs> anyway um good night you guys thanks for watching um thanks for hanging out and um i guess if you're you know follow me on twitch if you haven't already and uh you can subscribe to my youtube channel or i don't know just i'm here you can you can if you want, but if you're not feeling it, that's cool too, whatever. You do you, right? And good night, everybody. Or good evening. I don't know. Day? Stream? Okay. Um, I am not I am not doing a stream um tomorrow, but Head First Only is doing a stream tomorrow. Um and um I am going to watch it. I'll be around probably harassing the shit out of him because that's what I do. And I also mention a lot of poop. <laughs> of course, I'm going to make poop jokes. <laughs> um, stay safe. Try not to be a dick to people. And uh, I don't know. 
be be awesome to each other, okay? And don't 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 you know try not to get each other sick either. Come on, come on. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll see y'all later, and um, yeah, I'll come back with more shit. Lots of love. Goodbye. Good night. Bye.